Mina son konnichiwa und willkommen. And today this is another updated video on another impression I did months ago. And that's Robert Stack from Unsolved Mysteries. Yep, Robert Stack from Unsolved Mysteries. Let's begin the video, shall we? <clears throat> Join me for another edition of Unsolved Mysteries. Perhaps you may be able to help solve a mystery. Until next time, I'm Robert Stack. Veneta, Oklahoma, a small rural town in Craig County, December 29th, 1999. Ashley Freeman turned sweet 16. At her home, it's a night of celebration for her parents and for her best friend, Laura Bible. Update, after our story aired. Police received an anonymous tip that Alan Pylon had shot and killed himself in the Utah desert. Authorities located Pylon's remains and confirmed his identity for dental records. Each year in the United States, more than 200,000 people become the victims of arsonists. Each fire is an individual tragedy. In many cases, victims left not only homeless, but injured or dead. You're about to have a rare and disturbing opportunity inside the mind of an arsonist. An arsonist who police believe made a video tape with the fire he set. The story starts with an innocent discovery. August 15, 1989. Near Stockton, California. A car overheated in the scorching summer temperatures. We'll call the car's owner, Joseph Bia. Joseph inspected the damage when his wife and son looked on. Joseph decided that he and his son should walk to the nearest telephone. On the way, the boy noticed a camouflage jacket on the ground. Wrapped in the jacket were video tape with no label and several audio cassettes of heavy metal music. They decided to take the video tape home. <coughs> this is the actual video tape found by the Bias, and police are convinced that the person holding the camera set the fire himself. The Bia family was stunned when they realized what they were watching. The disturbing voice on the tape seemed to belong to the arsonist. The police assistance enhanced videos for clarity. Joseph Bia decided to turn the tape over to the authorities. The arsonist gives the date as 1988, when TV commercials recorded on another part of the tape verify that date. Because fire engines do arrive, it seemed very certain that somewhere were reported this fires on file. Update. Redwood City, California. 60 miles west of Stockton. Within minutes of our broadcast, several viewers Redwood City called our telecenter and identified the location of the house seen burning on the videotape. The arson occurred on August 15, 1988. The house that was destroyed was under construction at the time. Today has been rebuilt. Incredibly, on the night of the blaze, Woodside Captain Don Delages also taped the fire. Both of the teenage suspects had been pled guilty to one count of arson. Due to their age, they received probationary sentences. One of them has registered authorities to be a known arsonist until he reaches the age of 30. Since 1987, a man known as the Sweetheart Swindler was preying unsuspecting women, stealing first their hearts, then their money. Join me for these intriguing stories. Perhaps you may be able to help solve a mystery. When rock and roll senior Kurt Cobain committed suicide, few questioned the official ruling, but private investigator Tom Grant is convinced that the truth about Cobain's death has yet to be revealed. April 8, 1994. Music fans worldwide were horrified to learn about the tragic death of reluctant rock star Kurt Cobain. Cobain's body was thrown in the room above the garage of his Seattle, Washington home. Highway 50 snakes through the high Sierras, connecting Sacramento, California with Lake Tahoe, Nevada. In the spring of 1994, this remote mountain setting became the backdrop for an ominous mystery about Wonder's Miracle. On June 6th, a young single mother named Christine Scoobish and her three-year-old son Nick were driving Highway 50, headed for Carson City, Nevada. But somewhere along the 75 mile stretch of road, Christine and Nick vanished without a trace. In today's high-tech marketplace, more and more people are using classifieds to buy and sell computers. In September of 1992, a music video company in Nashville ran 
These notices for the local trade publication open to sell a top-of-the-line computer system valued at more than $30,000. At the time, it seemed inconceivable that the ads would lead to murder. For the last century, renowned scientists and amateur investigators have grappled with the mystery of the Loch Ness Monster, that elusive lake creature in Scotland sighted more than 3,000 times over the last 50 years, but never so far adequately explained. Some zoologists now actually theorize that the monster's home, Loch Ness, may be connected by underwater channels to the sea, and that the Loch Ness monster is in fact a sea serpent of some kind, traveling back and forth between the lake and the ocean. The zoologists also theorized that hundreds of other lakes located in the same proximate latitude band as Loch Ness could have similar connections to the sea and could today also be home to mysterious sea creatures. There have been reported sightings of creatures like the Loch Ness Monster in approximately 60 other lakes around the world. For example, here in Lake Shorjan, Sweden, Lake Levink here in the Soviet Union, and Lake Kushar, Japan. All these lakes belong to the same latitude band as Loch Ness in Scotland. So far, there have been no scientific verification for any of the sightings. The recent photographic evidence, the Canadian lake in the same latitude band, suggests a bizarre of a somehow enchanting thought that here in North America we may have a Loch Ness monster of our very own. Lake Okanagan, located in the province of British Columbia, had been more than 300 years been a reputed home of a water beast which seems to resemble a sea serpent. The lake is 75 miles long and it places 800 feet deep, an ample home for a large creature. They routinely sacrifice small animals in order to appease the demon. Today, 300 years later, the local population still fervently believes in the existence of the creature which they have dubbed Ogo Pogo. What if your mind worked like a television set, tuned into programs no one else could see? What if it could change channels at will, and, we, and what if it could never turn the set off? At dawn, Nelson and Cloud went looking for Julie. Allegedly masquerading as police officers, and Nelson and another family member drove to Tim Setti's address. Fortunately for Julie, the address belonged to Tim's brother Ted. Tim and Julie just a few yards away, sound asleep in the house next door. You be the judge, right to unsolved mysteries. If you have any information on the whereabouts of the Crystal Prince or Mr. Swallow, contact your local police immediately or call our toll-free number 1-800-876-5353. Who or what is responsible for the creation? What could have been the motive for this vicious hit-and-run killing? On the very night of our broadcast, Sharon Stevens has found her long-lost foster parents. Bruce and Brandon Lee, a father and son, linked by the action-packed world of martial arts films. No criminal charges were filed. And there you have it, my friends. The Robert Stack impression updated. If Robert Stack was still alive today, he would have been a hundred. Because he was born in 1919 and died in 2003. Okay, that should be enough for the video for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, comment. And as always, amigos, au revoir, au wiedersehen, sayonara, adios, and arrivederci. And make sure you click that bell icon so you'll get notified when I upload new videos. And I'll be back with another video shortly, so stay tuned.